And Disney, I mean, it's probably because of that mindset and those details. And it, it reminds me a little about some of the stories of Steve Jobs where his dad said, hey, you got to paint the back as well as the front. Well, no one's going to see the back. Yeah, but, but you will. I'm Al Roker. I'm here with the equal man. Word of mouth is now world of mouth. Because someone asked, what's the social play? What's the mobile play? Our clients and customers are telling us, hey, we love what you're doing here. Are you doing more of that today? What I'm telling you here today, I'm not suggesting we get rid of face to face. Digital leaders are made, not born. Welcome to today's Super You podcast. I couldn't be more excited today. We have the CEO of the Partners Federal Credit Union, John Janclays, and we met up in Dallas at an event. And I'll tell you, when I met this guy, I go, wow, he has it. He has that energy. When you meet someone that just makes you feel better about yourself, and I asked him what he does, and I found out what he does. That credit union is for all the Disney members and family members. So it's just amazing. That makes perfect sense. You have that it quality. So I couldn't be more excited to have you here today and all the experience that you've brought. When you think about what you do on a day-to-day -day level, that credit union manages over $1.7 billion in assets. And so if you think about big numbers, sometimes they're tough for us to grasp. If you're to put that in years, that's over 60 years. When you think about that, if you take 1.7 and put that into seconds and convert that to years, that's just insane in my mind for to get around that. And they have close to 200,000 members. And John, on a day-to-day -day basis, to help facilitate that, has a team of 450. So Welcome to the show. Glad to be here. It's an honor to be here. Yeah, looking forward to uh, today's discussion. And I always like to start things off with uh, your journey. So if you don't mind just kind of giving us the, the short encapsulation of your journey on how you got here today. Oh, sure. Short version would be, um, gosh, grew up playing athletics. And why that's important is just the concept of working within a team that it's only through a team that you can accomplish things that are so cool. Matter of fact, if you were to look at my screensaver on my phone. It's my Little League baseball team. I mean, it was such a powerful experience going all the way back there. But always wanting to find kind of that environment where you can do more together with folks. Um, I first had a contracting business and we made people's visions come true. There was nothing better than walking in your house and saying, what's your vision? What do you want to do here? And to make that happen in the physical world was pretty cool. Kind of the highlight project we did was the restoration of a museum over three years. And it was really cool to kind of bring that back together, knowing that all kinds of visitors would come to that later and enjoy this you know, spectacular place. So for me, it's always about doing something through a group of people that's bigger. I left uh, construction and went into financial services about 30 years ago and worked for several banks and savings and loans and was doing a little bit of consulting work then and was introduced to credit unions. And when I saw that business model for financial services, it's like, you know what? This is awesome the way they're doing this. So I worked at Lockheed for about 15 years and then uh, Disney came knocking and said, hey, we've got this and audacious goal, you know, we'd like to do is be able to double assets in, you know, five to seven years. And I felt like I had some insight about how to help. So I was kind of drawn to their mission. And uh, we've done it in three years. And so there was a lot of learning, tremendous teamwork, great support from the board and the sponsor. But uh, that's kind of been the leadership arc. And it's been a, it's been a lot of fun. That's amazing. Obviously, with what you do in your career and all the success you've had, you've come across many top CEOs and performers. Are there any traits or habits that seem to be common across these people that we can share with the audience? You know, if I think of my successful peers, and there's many of them, a couple things I think, Eric, they have in common. Number one is they're clear on their why. They know why they want to be in leadership and what they're trying to do. And then they connect that to the organization's mission. You know, so for my why is to help individuals thrive. Bottom line, that's what it is. And so through this mission of running the credit unit, I get to do that. I get to help 450 of our cast members thrive, and therefore the 200,000 members, and then therefore the broader society. So my why is, is my cup is full, right? right? I'm doing this kind of work. My peers do the same thing. They have some really deep motivation of why they do what they do. These are the leaders that over-index, not the ones that are hanging around the peer average, but the ones that really over-index. I think they're really connected to their why. Um, the second thing I think they do unique to CEOs, it's a difficult thing today. You have to have one foot in the future and one foot right now executing in today. 
So you need to bring the organization along into the future and think about those two realities, one foot in the future, one foot in the, in the current, executing. There's a tension, a dynamic tension between those two. You could almost imagine a rubber band between the future and the current state. And good leaders know how far to stretch that without breaking it. Compelling organization, moving up to the next level, making it an energizing work environment, increasing energy and focusing on it to get the mission done, but not breaking it. No, I like that. You can do the journey together with folks, too, when you're doing that. That makes sense. Along those lines, who has been the biggest influence on you, and what lessons did that person teach you? Wow. So um, probably a gentleman by the name of John McKinnon. Uh, when I left a construction and went to work in financial services, John ran five insurance agencies. He was trained in the military, the Marine Corps, and they really trained us well in how to be a great insurance professional. But John was so in on my success, you could stop right there on teaching the house stuff, but I'll tell you a story. So I come walking in, I'm, I'm, I'm new, I'm used to wearing you know, jeans and boots and stuff like that to work every day. And so I know I needed to wear a suit to show up and be this new sales manager guy. And I'm walking by his office and all of a sudden I hear, hell no. What is that about? I want, Mr. McKinnon, are you talking to me? He goes, hell no, get in here, kid. He goes, you can't dress like that and go out there and represent our savings and loan. You just can't do that. Charlotte! Charlotte's his assistant. She goes, take him down right now. Don't wait another minute. And take him down there and have my tailor get this kid a new suit. He can't go out there like this. And I was so embarrassed because, hey, I went to J.C. Penney and I got the best suit that was there. Smarter than ever. But here's the lesson I learned from that. That's all in leadership. He knew that that one thing would make a difference. And he didn't say, hey, you need to do something about it and just be a critic. He was actually in the arena with me saying, hey, let me introduce you to my people. Let's handle this right now, not tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And let's set you up for success, complete success, all in. All in. Great leader. Yeah. That's good. And obviously, you've taken it to heart. We were talking at lunch. You do a lot of progressive things. One thing is if you think about it, the Disney on the property, you even have a mobile credit union because it's so large. These 50,000 square feet, you can actually go where the people are. So it's on wheels, the credit union. Um, is there anything that's something your team does differently that you can share uh, with the audience? Yeah, it's unique to our DNA. So, you know, Disney is known for bringing out huge creative efforts, right? Whether it's the Black Panther or um, Wreck-It Ralph is what we're doing now. So as we get to that, on every Friday, we wear T-shirts that are about whatever the company is doing. We are all in with them. Our whole website will be Black Panther. Right. And uh, so that's something unique we do is we understand what's important to our sponsor, Walt Disney Company, where the big effort and push is. And we support by saying, hey, we all show up. If it matters to you, it matters to me. So let's show every way we can. We're dressed up like that. The website's ready to go. Let's have smashing success because if you win, we all win. I love it. That's great. Um, as we jump ahead here, is there a book, movie, poem, place? that our audience would benefit from. You know, I just built a library at the ranch and that's been a bucket list item for me. So I have all my books in there. I thought that was an open invitation for all the audience to go to your ranch. <laughs> Don't pick out a book. Hey, I'll put you to work. Yeah. There's mucking stalls, Eric. There's all yeah. kinds of work to be done. So yeah, please come on down. Um, but we do host a lot of people here. But in that library, um, the other day I was going through the bookshelf and Peter Drucker's uh, book on effective leader um, I was pulling that and looking at that. And there's just timeless things in there that every leader should get reconnected to and learn. You know, he wrote over 50 books. I got to study with him in my graduate school. I can hear his voice ringing in my ears as I'm picking up the book and doing that. And he's just reminding us that it starts with things that are just fundamental, like time management. If you can't manage your own time, you can't manage others. And just rereading that. So that book, uh, Peter Drucker's The Effective Executive. And that's amazing. So you were in graduate school. He was your actual teacher. Yes. Peter Drucker was. Okay. And then if, if he were to say something that says, this is the one thing you need to take out of this class, what do you think that he would say? Well, I think he got it right. Um, and the one thing would be, what is the purpose of the corporation? And that's to build a better society. And I think we're beginning to connect to that again, saying, you know, there are so many needs out there, and some of the most powerful brands are the richest ones, and they can do so much good. So I, I hear his voice uh, telling any CEO out there, a little more social consciousness and social impact, I think, is his legacy. That's great. Is there just a general favorite story? I mean, you're amazing. You've got experience. You've got your great storyteller. Are there any stories, just a general story that you want to share with the audience? Gosh. Um, okay. 
So I, I've got a story for you. Uh, this one would be um, my first day on the job as being a CEO. And um, frankly, Eric, I had no idea really what the job was about. Um, but to be able to go in there and on the desk was a memo from the board of directors saying, you know, we're on the mission together. We're all in. We've got you. We know that you're not going to be perfect and that you're going to make mistakes, but we're totally committed to your success. Let's go. I mean, think about that. Yeah. To find that on your desk mm -hmm. as a rookie CEO, and it's not just from one board member. It's a statement saying we're here. Let's go get the mission done. That's powerful. That's really, really powerful. And they're lucky. I mean, you, what you've done is amazing. Um, and it's timely, that story, because what's gone viral on the Internet recently is the note that George Bush left for Bill Clinton on the desk handwritten. So, um, no, that's wonderful. As we wrap things up here, is there any particular ask that you have uh, for the audience? Or maybe it's a question that I should have asked? No, I just think the, you know, the ask that I would have for the audience has to be an ask that I'm willing to answer myself. And that's to go, right? That 20-year-old, that person, when you're on the sideline and you think, you know, I'm not sure I'm ready to go. That the risk-taking is worth the rewards. And that's where the learning is. So lean into the future and take some risk. I love it. And then if you were to show up at Disney Park, whether it's in Anaheim, whether it's in Paris, whether it's in Orlando, and everyone had the same shirt. So every guest that's walking around in the park had the same shirt and it just had one word on that shirt. What would you want that word to say? God, it's got to be my favorite word. Dreams. Dreams would be the word. Making dreams come true. Well, it's a good thing to wrap up on dreams and John's making them come true, the financial dreams. And it's just amazing to have you here. It's been an honor to have you. So thank you so much for joining us on the Super U podcast. Thank you.